Good morning, everybody. It's Brian. Hope you're doing well today. It is the 13th of October, Tuesday, here for just a quick live session. Yesterday was a bank holiday. Uh, I mean, market's still trading, but you know, a lot of people were out, took the day off, uh, or just out of the market, maybe out of town. So, um, had some interesting stuff occur yesterday in the futures market. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Forex, great day not to trade, considering the fact there's a bank holiday and our big, big, big players weren't in the market. So um, Forex, back at it today for futures. We've got some things to look at, some things to discuss, and then uh, we'll let you go from there. Get started a little bit early. Uh, just I'm just here kind of watching things, planning the day. Figured might as well go ahead and, and get things get things knocked out while we can and uh, let you guys kind of get underway to plan your day prior to the market sessions beginning as well. All right, so let's let's kick things off. Let's start over here with um, the news. I mean, obviously we always wanna look at news to see what's happening for the day, what's happening during the week so we can plan our week out and ensure that we're not uh, taking action directly in the face of a news event. Uh, I kind of talked about this ad hoc, I mean, over and over and over, so I'm ad nauseum, so I'm sure that you guys already have that down and you understand why we're looking at the news. Uh, it's not so much for the news, it's so that we know, you know, when, when to maybe stay away. You know? uh, this week's actually a pretty light news week, by the way. Not a whole lot going on until really Friday. Uh, Friday we have some uh, red reports here, uh, core retail sales and retail sales reports on Friday. These can be market impactful just because, you know, we're, we're starting to come into uh, you know, new new season, uh, kind of gearing up uh, Halloween sales, and then into uh, you know into into Christmas. Can you believe that Christmas is coming up right around the corner? And if sales are are off, that could be an indication that maybe things are slowing down. That that could be uh, negative overall for us. But um, right now, man, things are things are still cranking along, and that's what we're what we want to focus on. Um, so starting over here in Forex, let's jump into the, the Forex market over here. Same exact marching orders as always. We're going to wait for the new session to begin, and we're going to watch and see which currencies we might be able to pair against one another. So planning for that, you know, I'm, I'm digging what's happening here. We've got the, the euro below the midpoint as well as the pound uh, below the midpoint coming into the new session. Uh, CAD is above the midpoint, has been above the midpoint for hours now. So a little divergence between, let's say, the, the CAD and the Euro or the, the CAD and the Pound, so the pairs would be the Euro CAD or the Pound CAD. Uh, a little divergence there could be a nice opportunity for us. Uh, both of those are in positions right now that, that give us an opportunity for continued movement. The Euro versus the CAD, it's moved 58 pips for the day so far averages into the you know mid 70s to mid 80s the pound cat has moved 70 let's just call it 75 pips for the day but its average is a lot higher its average is into that 130 to 135 range so you know potential opportunity certainly exists we can see it barely moved yesterday it only moved 66 pips yesterday so definitely opportunity exists so uh, we'll see what, that, what, what occurs as the market session begins. But if we continue to have this divergence where the CAD you know, continues to be a stronger currency in relation to the pound, then um, I would, I'm gonna look at this pound CAD as a potential pairing to jump into here uh, for, this, uh, for this tradable opportunity. And of course, as we do that, you know, we wanna double check and just make sure that we've got the volume detail that's going the same direction that we'd want to be going in. So in this case, you know, if we're looking to, to sell the pound versus the CAD, we'd wanna make sure that the volume detail uh, is, is giving us that, uh, that signal that would indicate that we've got volume behind us that supports that selling of the, the pound CAD as well. So, you know, checking all the boxes here, uh, we, you know, we'll, we'll, we see we've got decent divergence. If that divergence continues, we're good. Uh, the second piece, of course, is the, the, the range, so we're, so we're good there. And then the third piece is just double checking to see that the volume supports the direction we're trading. If all those things line up, we'll, I'll be happy to, to click that button as the new session begins and allow us to, to see if we can't get into a, a, a CAD, a pound CAD trade there. All right, moving on. Uh, coming over here to the uh, 
uh, futures market. <laughs> We've had just a crazy run on, uh, on the ES. I mean, I, it's had barely had a down day. You know, it's just, just parabolic move stronger. 35, 35 <laughs> is where we've hit on uh, the S&P. Uh, definitely a big decision point for us up here. It's hit its head here quite a few times and it's been uh, rejected off of it. It's certainly making a run for it again here this morning. We'll see what happens. It is opening below where it, uh, where it closed yesterday. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what occurs there. The bias is still long. Uh, you know, I mentioned Friday. I would, I, I kind of expected halfway to see a little bit of a pullback on Friday. It, it, it just laughed. You know, I, I really thought we'd see some profit taking and uh, you know pullback before the weekend, but uh, and the market just kept cranking on higher and higher and higher. So uh, here we are. We're, we're still in a long bias. So the, the four hour is long. The thirty minute is long. Um, you know, do with this what you will. Uh, this tells us we'd still continue to look for long trading opportunities. So a breakout long would be if we break above 35.35, that would be our, our break long. Uh, you know, if it uh, starts to pull back, you know, our, our level down here would be around 3,500. So, you know, if it pulls back, 3,500 would be the, the level here to, to maybe potentially look at buying a bounce off of. If it breaks and closes below 35, that might be the opportunity to, to say, hey, we need to just sit on our hands uh, because that could be the, the beginning of this thing rolling over. But, you know, right now, as it stands, we're still moving long. Uh, you know, and this, this is a, a, a good lesson. You know, I let my, my own personal bias get in the way on Friday, kind of thinking we'd be looking for shorts. Never did. And, uh, you know, that, that kept me away from things that could have been potentially profitable here in just trading with the trend. And this is what you know, we've talked about before when the market was dropping, <clears throat> you know, and folks keep trying to call the bottom. Same when the market's rising, folks are always calling the top. The challenge is, you know, when we call the top, we have a lot of opportunity to be wrong before we're right, which is why trading with the trend, going in the direction the train's moving, not trying to keep jumping out in front, hoping it stops, right? Just going with the direction that train's moving and going on for little rides, taking a little ride, taking a little ride, taking a little ride, is historically the most profitable way to trade in the markets. So, um, you know, that's what we continue to look at here. We, we find a, a market bias, we trade the direction of that bias. If we're wrong and the market reverses, that's why we have stop losses. We, we you know, trade in the direction of that bias. And if it happens to be reversing, we, we just get out, we cut it short. You know, we get out of the trade and, and let the market, you know, do what it's going to do. And if it does roll over and end up going short, then we wait for confirmation that it's going to be going short. And then we start looking at short trading opportunities. But for right now, market is still uh, in that, that long bias. So, um, you know, the couple ways to look at it here, again, you know, breaks above 35, 35 could be a breakout long pullbacks, you know, so looking at pullbacks to 35, 10, 3,500, could be an area to buy off of 3510 3500 if it breaks below 3500 that might just be kind of that you know you might consider that to be that line of demarcation where it says hey if we break below this and close below this i'm, I'm not going to do anything i'm going to sit on my hands and let the you know see what the what the market does with that information uh, the other way to trade it is you know looking here at the 30 minute side and waiting for the market to make lower highs and lower lows, and then plan a breakout of that previously closed lower high. Uh, again, though, still watch for key levels. If we break below certain key levels, that might be an indication that uh, things are changing. And even if we keep pulling back, you might want to stop looking for that that long breakout. Um, if we if it you know if we break below certain key levels, uh, crude is in a mixed bias right now. The four hour is 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 long, but the thirty minute is short. On crude, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see where this goes, but right now we've got a mixed bias, which tells us, hey, don't do anything, sit on your hands right now. Gold is in a long bias, four hours long, 30 minutes long, so we can start looking for long trading opportunities here. Uh, that could look like a breakout above 1930. We could be looking at longs above 1930, so if it breaks here, we can go long off of that. Uh, pullbacks down to 1920 could be a, a nice uh, key level 
to look at a, a buy off of uh, on a pullback on gold. Uh, breaks down below 1915. That that's probably the, the signal at this point to say, hey, you know, we're just gonna not do anything anymore for the day and let the market figure out if it's got a new direction. If it gets down this low, if it gets down to 1915, more than likely our our moving average would have crossed here anyway, and it would have given us a mixed bias, which would be telling us to stay away uh, any, anyway on that. Uh, of course, the other way to watch it is to wait for the, the pullbacks here, see if we're making lower highs and lower lows, and then plan a breakout off of that uh, break back along at the close, you know, as it breaks through the close of that previous lower high. So another way to go. And looking at that, that's just a good consistent way of, of trading that doesn't require any level of, of uh, uh, you know, additional analysis or anything. It's just a nice, smooth, easy way to, easy way to look at the market. All right, so that's, um, that's pretty much everything for me. Crypto, crypto keeps cranking along. Uh, we're moving higher and higher and higher on, on crypto. We're approaching 400 on, uh, on ETH. Bitcoin's sitting right around 11.5. So, uh, you know, certainly, you know, in a, in a long bias on both of those. Uh, big fear in crypto, you know, obviously it's kind of viewed by some as a safe haven. Um, I, I think it's, there's a lot of speculation that's come into crypto. You've got a lot of larger market players in there. Uh, you've got big um, market makers that are now offering that out for uh, U.S. clients to trade on margin here in the U.S. Uh, in fact, TradeStation just, offered, just started offering crypto. So there's a lot of things happening there that's adding additional uh, participants into the market, which is also creating additional speculation. Uh, my fear with crypto right now is that if the bottom falls out of like the S&P, NASDAQ, I have a feeling the bottom's gonna fall out of the, of the crypto space as well. Right now though, I mean, everything's cranked along. You know, so as, as the old saying goes, you make hay while the sun shines, right? So. That's what we should be doing. The sun is shining, markets are cranking higher. We should be making hay while we can. And then, uh, you know, if they if they roll over on us, we want to wait for confirmation of that. Then we can start, you know, we can start, you know, making taking trades in that that other direction as well. But anyway, for right now, got a market bias long in in you know both ETH and in uh, Bitcoin right now. So I think we've covered it all. We've talked about what we're looking at in futures. Uh, so we've, we've talked about S&P, long bias, still looking for long opportunities there. We gave some key levels for those. Crude is mixed, not going to do anything there. Gold is a long bias. We talked about different ways to trade that, key levels there. I uh, talked about Forex. You know, I'm, I'm liking the, the pound CAD, Euro CAD, Euro CAD cross you know, uh, pairs, uh, favoring of the, the pound CAD over the Euro CAD just because there's probably a little bit more space for a, a, longer, a longer, larger move on that one. All right, so I think that's it. We've hit it all, and we're out of here before the U.S. Forex session begins. So you guys all have a great day, and if we've got some trade setups that meet the criteria and futures, which is just simply looking at trading with the trend and watching for pullbacks where we make lower highs and lower lows, if we're in a long or vice versa, if we're in a short, if we, if we have some setups based on that, we'll talk about those uh, later on today. All right, if we don't, we'll just be back in the morning and talk about different ways to, to look at the market, key levels, breakout points, and, and whatnot from there. All right, have a great day. Bye.